of the mother's joy. There's a mother's joy. I remember, you know, when I found out that I was pregnant with Jazz, you know, they had told me that I couldn't have children. And so what joy to find out that what the doctor said was impossible, that God said a different story. Amen. Or what joy I felt knowing that I was giving birth to a baby. Amen. What joy. I can only imagine how Sarah must have felt. This old, old woman that had been promised that she would have a baby, that she would be the mother of many nations and years and years and years had passed by and it seemed like that promise wasn't going to come to pass. But can you imagine the joy when she overheard uh, Abraham having a conversation that, that next year this time there's going to be a baby born between you and your wife. Oh, the Bible says she laughed. She laughed because, you know, oh, could this be? Could this be a woman in my old age that will have this type of joy? Oh, when you're having a baby, when you're excited, there's joy that a mother's mother feels. And when that baby comes, you know, every time my children have a birthday, they always come to me so that I can tell them their birth story. You know, I, I know as we get, as I get older, it changes a a little bit because I'm like the, the details are starting to get a little dim but they come for me to tell of the joy of when they first came out when they first came here and I kissed that forehead for the first time when we looked into one another's eyes for the first time that's a mother's joy anybody can witness to that right now amen amen and then we look in Matthew chapter 20 where it talks about Salome and this is the mother that displays boldness this was a bold sister because she's talking to Jesus she said you know what I want my sons one on the right and one on the left this is a bold sister because she didn't just say I want them to be in the kingdom I want them to sit right beside you Jesus how many of us are bold women we'll go and make requests for our children because we want the best for them. Amen? Oh, I'm not mad at Salome. She was a bold sister. If you're going to ask anybody anything, you might as well ask Jesus. Amen? And if you're going to ask for anything, you might as well ask for the best. Amen? I love how Jesus just dismissed her nicely. He didn't hurt her feelings. Amen? He was like, you know, that's not my job. I can't tell who's going to sit here and who's going to sit there. That's the father's job. But you got to give Salome a little high five that she said, well, at least I asked. Amen? I want the best for my children how many of you want the best for your children amen hallelujah hallelujah you know it's amazing to me your kids be trying out for different things and you know they ain't even good but you like my child should be on that team my, you, my child should have got an A. You know they didn't study you or anything but you'll go in there and be bold enough to stand for your child amen Praise God. How many of us have made the fatal, the foolish mistake of saying, I know my child didn't do that. Amen. And then you were just as wrong as could be. But you were bold enough to go and stand and stand for your child. Amen. How many have been shamed when you did that one time? Amen. Because your child uh, had told a little one for you. Amen. But you were bold. You were bold. Oh, but I love the next one, a mother's faith. A mother's faith. That's Eunice and Lois. When we talk about that unfeigned faith, where in 2 Timothy chapter 1, Paul is commending Timothy. And he says, I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And I'm persuaded that it's in thee also. Oh, he could commend Timothy because Timothy had been raised right. His mother had raised him right with faith and even his grandmother. Say generational. Amen. There was a generational faith thing going on here. Those mothers had passed that faith on to that child. Amen. And Timothy went on to do great things for the kingdom because of a mother's faith. Amen. Mothers, we have a job to do. We have to make sure that we are constantly staying in the faith. Amen. Constantly believing God. Constantly putting that into our children children. Amen. Making sure that we understand that they are watching us. Amen. That when you are in faith, that you are a living epistle. You are teaching them faith. Amen. By how you handle situations. Somebody say a mother's faith. A mother's faith. Amen. Now go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 31. I told you this wasn't going to be a long message. Amen. Proverbs 31. The next one I want to look at is a mother's advice. How many of you know that mothers can give some advice? Amen. Oh, that's our job. Amen. Sometimes they want the advice and sometimes they don't want the advice. But that is a mother's job to give advice. When we're looking here in Proverbs 31, we usually have a tendency to drop to verse 10. But I want to call your attention to verses 1 through 9. And I'm going to read them because this is uh, uh, the, the advice of a mother. The sayings of King Lemuel, an oracle his mother taught him. O oh, my son, O oh, son of my womb, O oh, son of my vows, do not spend your strength 
on women. Your vigor on those who ruin kings. See, this mom is starting it out right. She's like, let me let you know right now. Can't nobody tell you about a woman but another woman. Amen? She said, don't spend your strength on them. They have ruined kings. Amen? And so she's letting them know now. How, come on here. I love it because a mother sometimes needs to sit down and have a talk with a son. That sometimes they feel like they know everything, but you have to tell them you better protect your seed. You better, you better understand. You better keep something hidden. You better keep that thing in your pocket. I'll just say it like that because they after your seed. Don't spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. Come on here. I've seen a lot of kings ruined because of a woman. Amen? It's not for kings, O Lemuel, not for kings to drink wine. Now she's telling them about this partying thing. Not for rulers to crave beer. Saying if you're going to be somebody, you can't be no drunkard. You can't be hanging out at no club. Amen? I just love it. I'm just going to put it in my lingo. Amen? I hope my children are listening to me today. It's not for kings. It's not for queens. It's not for people that's going to do something to be drinking wine and, and, and uh, craving beer. Let's say drink and forget what the law decrees and deprive all the oppressed of the rights. Say you're going to forget what your assignment is. You don't forget what your purpose is if you get caught up in the world. You get caught up in the in crowd. Amen? Oh, this is a mother's advice. It says, give beer to those who are perishing. Wine to those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. She said, you know what? That stuff has a purpose, but it's not your purpose. Amen? So she's saying, you know what? If somebody's miserable, let them drink. Amen? If they're sick, they're in anguish, let them drink. But that's not you. If you follow my advice, you won't be miserable. Amen? If you follow my advice, you won't be broke. Amen? If you follow my advice, you won't be ruined by a woman. Amen? Hallelujah. She says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. I love this. This is a woman that's advising a king. She realizes that there's a king in her son. I realize there's a king in my son. There's a queen in my daughter. Amen? And so I treat them like that. And I have real conversations with them. I do give them advice. I say, don't get caught up in no boys. Amen? Don't get caught up in these girls. I know they're cute. I know they're shapely. I know that they are talented and all this and they're beautiful to the eyes but you remember that you're a king you remember that you have greatness inside of you you remember that you have a destiny and that you have a purpose and don't let one little thing throw you off of what you're supposed to be amen oh somebody say a mother's advice a mother's advice. And mothers, you need to be bold enough, amen, to give the advice. Sometimes they don't want the advice, but you need to give it to them anyway, amen? Because you've been there, done that, and you're trying to help them, amen? So I have real conversations, amen? Sometimes my kids are embarrassed, but we have the real conversations, amen? Say real. Real conversations. I talk to them, amen, to make sure that they know what's up, amen? Tell your kids what's up, amen? Because guess what? They're going to find out anyway, so you need to be the one to tell them what's up, amen? Praise the name of the Lord. A mother's advice. Nobody can do it like a mama, amen? Praise God. Praise God. And then the last one I want to talk about is a mother's swag. Say swag. swag. Say swag. A mother's swag. Everybody always preaches from Proverbs 31 on Mother's Day. So I got to keep it going. Amen? So I want to talk about a mother's swag real quick. Let's look at this woman as we continue to read in Proverbs. It says, a wife of noble character. Who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. 